Good morning and welcome to the, the Good, Good News Show. Show. I'm Adam. And I'm Caroline. And we've got lots of good news stories from around the world. And we'll be going back in time to find out what the good news of Jesus really is. But we've been sent some fantastic work which you guys have done at home. So let's have a look at them now. Yes, did you know, Caroline, that uh, millions of pounds have been raised for charities in the first ever virtual London Marathon? Amazing! So how did that happen? Well, normally every, everyone runs the same route through London one spring morning, but this year it was delayed until October and just the top athletes got to run through the city centre. But members of the public, they took part running the 26.2 miles on whatever true route they wanted to go. And we heard about this guy called Ken from Ireland, who was 87 and he completed it. And this was his fourth, 40th marathon. That's incredible. He'd done it every year. How long did it take him? Just under eight hours in stormy weather. Amazing. What a legend. Now that's what I call commitment. But now I think it's time to go over for our Jake of the day. A boring bunch of dogs. 101 donations. Why did the cow cross the road? Because he wanted to go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the first underwater spy? James Pond. <laughs> 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 now let's go over to KT, who's going to tell us a bit about Operation Christmas Child. Hi everyone, I wanted to tell you about an opportunity to share good news with children all around the world. And they're usually children who come from very difficult circumstances. They might not be used to receiving presents at all, but you could send a lovely Christmas present to a child somewhere else in the world. And you could do it over half term. So um, all you need is a shoebox and to choose some items to go in it that you think a child would like to receive. So in here we've got a football that's deflated so it fits in the box and a pump to pump it up and a hat and a water bottle and toothbrushes, some stationary things, a couple of toys. And if this box goes to a child who never usually gets a present then imagine what a fantastic Christmas you'd give them and all the children are offered the chance to hear the good news about Jesus that we've been hearing about this week too. So I've got a story of a child who received just what she needed in her box and a film clip that shows you more about it. This is a little girl named Patricia and this is a picture of her receiving a shoebox in Zambia, which is the country she lives in. Well, a friend of mine was on that trip giving out boxes and they noticed that all the other girls were playing the skipping ropes that they'd received. But Patricia was sitting on her own with the presents she'd got in her lap like that. And then they realised that this little girl can't see. She's blind. But the amazing thing is, all the presents in her box either made a noise or felt special. And so the gesture that she's holding there, it's got bells on its hands and its feet. And it's incredible the number of times you hear a story about a child receiving exactly what they need in their box. So if you do want to do a box, you can imagine the child who might receive it and think what they'd like. The children are completely overjoyed. It's a real celebration. So many smiles on their faces. Kids are so excited, giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name, and that's what this is all about. It's its wonderful way to enter into the Christmas spirit in its true meaning. 
Operation Christmas Child has grown hugely over 30 years since it started in a small town in the UK. And has now snowballed into this enormous global movement. That's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders and knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Lives are being changed. All over the world, it's brilliant. If after watching that you'd like to do a box, then we'd love to make it easy for you. You could come to Christchurch Sidcap this afternoon and pick up an empty box like this any time between 1 and 3 today or tomorrow. And also take a leaflet because it tells you some ideas to put in, things you can't put in, and it's got the labels on the back as well. And for the first five people that come, we've got these soft toys. You can put it in the box to send to the child, but maybe before that you can take a picture of it somewhere near where you live and you could send it to us. So hope to see you later to get a box. Wow, so that's taking the good news out to the whole world. Amazing, I love that. I loved how excited the children were. They loved it, receiving their present. So, where can I get one of those boxes, Adam? Well, right here in the West Wing at Christchurch Sidcup, opposite the Harvester. You can come and pick up the box either today or tomorrow and then get filling in. What time should they come? I have absolutely no idea. Maybe between one and three would be a great time. <laughs> can you remember all the miracles that Jesus did this week? Now let's see, there was the healing of the paralyzed man, calming the storm, feeding the 5,000. Wait, I know. Let's go over to the song we've been learning to remind us. Woo! Jesus healed the paralyzed man who was born to him. Jesus healed him so he could show he forgives our sin. How cool is that? How cool is that? He told the man to pick up his mat. He must be God if he did that. How cool is that? Jesus calmed a terrible storm while he was at sea. Jesus calmed it so he could say, Fear not, trust in me. How cool is that? How cool is that? He spoke the word, the way the dead flat. He must be God if he did that. How cool is that? Jesus fed a very big crowd. Who loved food to eat? Jesus fed them so he could show He's all that we need. How cool is that? How cool is that? From all that bread you almost get fat. He must be God if he did that. How cool is that? Jesus really is amazing, but now I think it's time for our weather report. So over to you, weather reporter. What? I, I don't think I can see you. Is, it, is anybody there? Ah, uh, hello? I think we're on. Do we have lights? Graphics? Anything? Good morning. Well, it's a strange day here in the studio. The start of the day seems normal in regards to weather, you'll be pleased to know. Sidcup will see early cloud, which will clear as the sun rises. To the east, Welling is the last to get the sunshine. But further in the morning, all areas shall see clear skies and some sunshine. There may be a light shower in Erith towards the late in the morning, at midday. What? What? Hang on. Um, apparently from midday, everything will go dark. This is very difficult for me to explain as a weatherman because there is no eclipse or any explanation at all. 
There will be complete darkness from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock. After that, we are expecting conditions to return to normal. But what is normal in these strange times? In all my years as a weatherman, I've never seen anything like this. That's what to expect today. Back to you in the studio, Adam. Wow, that really is strange weather. I wonder what's caused that. Oh, oh, I think I've got, I've got a report in from our time-travelling reporters. Let's go back 2,000 years to see if they can explain this. Over to you. Viewers of The Good News Show, this is Tom with a special report on an event that seems on the face of it anything but good news. And it is news of a death. The death of Jesus. The man who went around doing all those amazing things, more good than anyone has ever done. And yet, he has been crucified. That is, nailed to a cross and left to die with two criminals either side of him, one on his right, one on his left, as he was left to die. I need to bring you up to date with this event by telling you the story of this momentous week that has led up to it. A few days ago, Jesus arrived into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. He was proclaimed by the crowds as king. And yet, as the week went by, he provoked the envy the jealousy of the leaders of the nation who ganged together and took him over to the Romans and the Roman soldiers took him, they beat him and they nailed him to this cross. And this afternoon on the Friday, he died. It seems like bad news, although extraordinary things have happened around this death. At about midday today, when the sun should have been at its brightest, darkness fell over the whole land. It lasted for three hours. And then the earth shook. As he was nailed to the cross, Jesus prayed for those who were crucifying him, saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. This has left a huge impression. The man who led the soldiers that killed him has said since, surely Jesus is the Son of God. Now, why did this happen? Well, in the days before Jesus' death, he said that he would give his life to pay the price to set many free. He would be sent away from God's presence like we deserve to be for all the things we've done wrong so that we can be brought into God's presence and it seems that is exactly what has happened today. But Jesus, as part of God's plan, as the centre of God's plan of love, has given his life for us. That is the most extraordinarily wonderful news that has ever been, even though it looks like such terrible news. And so, at the end of this day in Jerusalem, we need to think so hard to understand why is it that this should happen. And I think, uh, viewers at home, that the answer can only be that God must love us very, very much indeed to give his son to do this for us and that Jesus must love us very much indeed to give himself like this to die on the cross. There's much to be understood about today, much talk about it and of course the big question is what next? What will happen? Jesus' body has been taken from the cross and placed in a grave. His followers are weeping and crying, grieving and mourning. But could there be a future for him? That remains to be seen. But the news from today, at Calvary, outside Jerusalem, is that Jesus has died on a cross and it just seems that God has been working today more powerfully than ever, even though it didn't look like it, but that that is in fact what has happened. So at the end of this special report, I hand now back to the studio to Adam and to Caroline. Hi guys, it's time for another Bible story. This one is called The Crucifixion. I wonder what it's about. Wait a second, Jesus is getting arrested. What's going on? This shouldn't be happening. Now take him away. Oh no! There's Pilate, a very official leader. Oh, Jesus has been taken to him. He's going to decide whether he's good or not. 
He's thinking. He says, no, he is not a bad guy. Yes, you'll set him free. No, no, we don't want him free. Oh, no, he might change his mind. What's he going to choose? No, he chose Jesus to be chosen to whatever they want him to, to be done to. No! Oh, they're hurting Jesus and taking his clothes. They're whipping him and hurting him. And now they're putting him in clothes and bowing down, saying, Hey, hail the king of the Jews. I'm so mean. There he is. He's coming up across. I fell over. Okay. He's going to try again. Oh, and he fell over again. Okay, that guy's getting a bit annoyed. So he's going to give him one more chance. Get up. Oh, and he fell over. Okay, dude, over there. Help this guy. I'm warning. Okay, okay, okay. He's coming down because he's too scared of that guy. And he's helping him carry the cross up. Okay. Here is Jesus. He's nailed to a cross. It's hurting so bad. One of those guys is shouting insults at him. Oh, you're so lame. You should save us both. The other one is saying, No, we should be drowning. You've done stuff wrong. This man has done nothing. Jesus said, Well done. Tomorrow you will be with me in paradise. In the last three hours of his life, it was really dark. Then, in his last second, he, he said, My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? And then, it is finished. They took Jesus' body to a tomb and left it there to, to be kept there. They rolled a stone in front of it and left. They sent some guards to guard Jesus' body in the tomb. Oh, that's so sad. I thought Jesus would stay forever. Oh, yeah, I know. Mm, that's so sad. Well kids, the show is nearly over for today. Don't forget to come to the West Wind between 1 and 3 at Christchurch Sick Cup opposite the Harvester to collect a shoebox for Operation Christmas Child. 
Or if you can't get in in time, then you can check out the Christchurch website for more details on how to get involved. Fantastic. That'd be brilliant. Can't wait. So, tomorrow is the final Good News Show. Oh, what? Really? It's all going to be yeah. done? Yeah, it's the last one. So <sighs> don't forget, it premieres at 9am tomorrow. Be there. I know I will be. But for now, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Goodbye! <sighs> well, how do you think it went today, Adam? Well, I think, uh, I think it went all right. But I think right at the end there, we weren't in sync saying goodbye. I think you were just too slow. Too slow? No way. You were too fast. I was not too fast. You were. And you forgot to tell them about the bedtime story. Oh, you're right, I did. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, we all make mistakes. See you tomorrow. What, the red light's still on? Whoa, we're still live. <laughs> well, goodbye everyone, see you tomorrow. And don't forget about the bedtime story.